Thank you so much, sir. Our uh, next presenter is actually a very, very well-known personality, especially in the Arab world. Uh, he has wide-ranging interests and has made a lot of contributions to professional services, intellectual property, education, knowledge economy, and information technology. He's uh, created a unique hybrid, a profit private firm with a mission statement to contribute to the socio-economic development of the Arab world. He's also served on the board of the United Nations Global Impact and as chairman of the United Nations Global Alliance for ICT and Development. He is currently the chairman of the Arab Coalition of Services and a member of the WTO panel on defining the future of trade. He's going to talk about a very, very interesting session, which is the future of transportation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali, founder and chair of Talal Abu Ghazali. After this introduction, you may expect some wisdom. But, uh, and that's true, because Winston Churchill once said, the greatest lesson in life is to realize that idiots can be right. So take me for an idiot, since I am not a military expert, uh, I can be right in what I'm going to say, and uh, give me the benefit of doubt. Uh, uh, in my message to you this morning as a non-military expert talking to the military. Um, the world is going into a knowledge revolution which is called the fourth industrial revolution. And next week uh, I'm publishing a book on how the world will be in the future years as a result of the development of ICT technologies. And uh, we're heading towards something which is completely different. In 20 to 30 years, our grandchildren will think of this generation we are in as the Stone Age, because we're going to be in a completely different world as a result of many things. And that's where I want to alert the military. I think the military are still not aware of the different world that we will be living in. We will be living in a world called singularity, where machines and human beings will be one community and we will be talking to machines and machines will be talking to each other more than we talk to each other. In fact, there is a university and my deputy um, son uh, has just come from Singularity University in the US where they teach the future of uh, the world. Um, my organization became the largest and the leading uh, organization in the world in many fields, including intellectual property and many other fields, only because we have, since 1972, when we started, realized that there is something coming called the knowledge revolution, because I had the advantage of having my first computer lesson in 1965. 1965, I had my first course. So I realized that something is coming and I kept following and that's why Kofi Annan elected me to chair the UN ICT task force which formulated the strategies of ICT globally. I'm telling this so that I can tell you my background, now which is not military. Um, but we are interested in the military and that is how we are very privileged that we have a partnership agreement with the Jordan Armed Forces. This joint agreement is focused on one thing, innovation in the military. How can we develop 
technologies for invention and create an incubator that would provide facility for national elections, inventions. We know that the U.S. has been a leader worldwide in technologies, military and otherwise. The Internet itself is an invention of the military and intelligence system in the U.S. So the DARPA is, is the best example of, uh, of this. Now, talking about helicopters, particularly, or air travel, or air transport, I am sorry to say that uh, since uh, 100 years, since 100 years when the Wright brothers launched the first airplane, not much development has been in the air, air industry. Okay, we have now automated aeroplanes, we have pilot training, we have airports, uh, etc., uh, control. But that's not enough in a hundred years. When are we going to have unmanned driven aeroplanes? The transport, the land transport is ahead of of the air transport in many respects. And I think in helicopter technology, we need to, to pull our socks up and realize that the world is changing. It would be safer for me if the, if the aeroplane is manned on the ground because there is much better control. There is a, a, a group, an infrastructure of facilities and uh, coordination more than having a captain on the plane. I, I would not feel scared like I have, I have been in, it's, it's already we have trains that are unmanned, self-driven trains, and it's very safe. I'm looking forward to that change. We have uh, to learn that uh, DARPA, and probably we need a new DARPA, to look at what uh, the military should be doing in air transport. There are, in, in future, on transport, road transport, 95% of the roads on the, of the cars on the road will disappear. You don't need to have your car. Most people, 95% of people will not have their own private cars because you have a storage of cars all over the world in different plots. You don't need to have parking space, you don't need to take care of your car, you don't need to insure it, you don't need to spend on it, invest on it, you just call a car and it comes to you. This is uh, something that, uh, and you will save the world 60,000 car accident death every year. So we need to have a new look at what is required. I am not here to talk about the technologies. I am here to uh, say that we need more effort, efforts in the production of technologies in the in technologies in the field of the, uh, transport, particularly air transport. Um, GPS. We have GPSs now. And by the way, I'm sure you all know that the Chinese are coming up with a new GPS, which is going to be more advanced than GPS. Technology only moves forward, and every invention triggers a number of inventions. So we have to realize that uh, the GPS we're using, and I've been approached, we have a very close relationship with all governments of the world, of course, with the U.S. And to begin with but also with China. So we know that there is a technology now for a GPS, which is a GPS plus, because it has the added value of the security element to it, not just a road indicator. It's a security indicator and a security guide. And uh, that is a development that we have to look at in the field of uh, air transport as well. I happen to chair in Washington the Coalition for S Sustainable Urbanization, which is addressing how to solve the problems of the world in an, in an, an urbanized world. There will be no villages in future. The whole world will be cities. 
small, large, etc., but cities. And as a result of uh, urbanization and the technologies, and in fact, also we have a partnership which is now in be being signed with uh, UN Habitat on how to solve the problems of road traffic with unmanned cars, how to address the various issues in the world as a result of a world uh, which is run by ICT. So the, in the field of uh, uh, helicopter travel, we need uh, to have a look at the, at the aspects that uh, help us, like I am, for example, I have just come from Bahrain last week, three days ago. Uh, I'm, I happen to be the ambassador of the UN on tourism as well. But my function at this conference was how to apply technologies to tourism. And we are establishing a, a smart center hosted by us based on big data so that we can coordinate all the information in the world in the field of uh, of tourism and put it together for the industry, whether it is the tourist or the, the tourism agency or the countries that have are hosting tourism and to move to, st to smart tourism. I think we need to look at big data also in the air industry. Why do I have to go to my agent? And I'm talking about air transport in general. And this applies to uh, military uh, aircraft. Why do we need to go to different agencies and different information centers? Why can't we have a, a uniform ecosystem database that can provide all the information? Why don't we have a, a one code for everything that has to do with, air, with the military transport? Each country has its own system, but we need to develop, and I have been, I'm a person who believes in, uh, in standards, because I served on the uh, UN, I chaired actually the United Nations uh, Committee on Harmonization of Accounting and Re Financial Reporting Standards. And the way to, to harmonize is to have standards. I think we need standardization in the in the in, in the military industry, just like any and I, like any industry. And I'm here to call on the military that you need a partner with whom you are missing, the private sector. The private sector is the creator of knowledge, the main creator of knowledge, the main creator of wealth, and the user of your services. So to, to operate in isolation, it's a right in the military to think, and I respect that, and I admire that. And I, have, I owe great respect to the military. You are help protecting us. You are providing us with the safety. You are providing us with, the, with everything that make, makes us uh, what we are. So we are indebted to you. But you are missing the, the privilege of having a partner like I have said we are in partnership with the Jordanian Armed Forces and we found out that there is a lot that we can learn from the Armed Forces and a lot that we can give them. So this is, and actually if you remember the internet was invented by such a partnership. It was not just the military and the CIA, it was the, the research centers, the universities and the research centers in the U.S. That's how we came up with this great internet. And by the way, since we're talking about internet, I want you to remember that the internet that we use now is going to be obsolete in less than five years. Because another internet is coming called the internet of things, IOT. The IOT is designed so that this mic uses the internet the way I use the internet. My car, my phone, my, in, my every equipment, the air conditioning in my home operates on the internet and uses it.
So again, that's a dimension the military has to look at. How are we going, the, the 5G, we are already now designing and producing a gadget which will be 5G operated and at the same time which would serve for the purposes of being a mobile telephone, a tablet and an internet connectivity but on the uh, 5G. So we have to realize that uh, what I'm calling for is that we need in the military to have, just like in any organization, we need to have a department that focuses on technology of the future, how to create it, how to adapt it, and how to use it. I have uh, spoken a lot, but I have much more to say, but I will, uh, I will shut up here at this point. And uh, I, again, I repeat, I'm calling on the military to realize, because I, if I ask the military, what are you? You're not government. You're not private sector. You're not an educational institution. You're not a civil society. You are, what are you? Nobody can answer that question. The military, we say, we are military. Are you a profession? What are you? I think we should start defining ourselves in the military. You should. I'm not here. I'm here to, to express my views. Defining yourself as to what you are and what is your role. And how can I call you? The military. The moon. But what are you? I know that the moon shines and I know that you shine in what you do. But uh, I think you should become the military should become defined as the technology of military services. You should become, in an age of technology and in a knowledge age, you should become the technology in the military. You are nothing and you should not be anything more than te technology creators and technology users in the military. Because it's not anymore, the military is not anymore the way it is when it started. It is technology for the purposes of, of military services. Thank you very much.